What's up, Cowboy Nation? Akuye Media here once again. Um, wanted to go over a few things with uh, uh, this g game that's coming up because um, this game has a lot of playoff implications early on, believe it or not. Uh, and that's because, one, uh, there aren't many teams who successfully make the playoffs going 0-2 or 0-3 for that matter. Uh, so neither of, of us, meaning the Cowboys or the Giants, want to be 0-3, obviously. I mean, I'm Captain Obvious on that one, right? But um, one thing that we, we need to consider is the intensity that we'll be having to play with. And if we're correct in saying that the Cowboys were rusty, which I believe they were, uh, due to the fact that they didn't play in the preseason, uh, and that Dak needs uh, help around him, then... We don't, we don't just need to turn it up and get to a normal uh, level. Uh, we need to be on a level that is beyond the norm because the intensity uh, that the Giants are going to bring is going to be real. Um, keep in mind, uh, in this video anyway, or in that game, um, the Giants' defense only gave up 13 points. They, they did a great job against the Jags. The Jags' defense actually scored a touchdown on a pop-up pass from Eli Manning which was really the difference maker in that game. Had that not occurred, uh, the Giants looked like a 1-0 team. They played pretty good, sound football against the Jags, and they, they actually um, um, held them in check, um, considering. Uh, our, but we're going to look at uh, what we need to do in order to successfully attack this giant front seven uh, and then the, the secondary on the back end as well. So let's, uh, let's, let's dive in. Uh, in a second. But before I do that, I also wanted to say that um, the people who are preaching doom and gloom that the season is over, um, I just want to start by saying I don't believe that. I don't believe that our season is over because Dak struggled. Um, I don't believe that Dak is forever uh, trash or a burning pile of garbage or anything like that. Um, I do believe that uh, Dak has a lot of work to do, and I do believe and I know um, that in order to win, we have to establish the run, play to our strengths, and allow Dak to play to his. Um, just to his credit, and I said this in the last video as well, um, you can't have him playing behind the chains uh, for the majority of the first half. That's not Cowboy football. A lot of that was due to uh, rust. That's before he even started really you know, making any passes or passing attempts. Most of those pass attempts were from the second half uh, because in the first half we, we really couldn't stay on the field. Sound, penalty-free football um, is, is starting, you know, uh, uh, the game off right that way is, is imperative, uh, along with the fact that we need to score early and establish the run. Okay, uh, starting with uh, the level of importance as far as the running game is concerned, uh, that begins and ends right here, dead center in the middle of this field. This is uh, Snack Harris, folks, for those of you who don't know who he is. Uh, he's a nose tackle that plays for the Giants, or a one-tech uh, defensive tackle. And he patrols the middle of this field here, uh, either either side of the center, so in the one gap. But um, he's very disruptive, as you, as you guys know. When you watch him, uh, in this clip, you'll see um, the Jags actually have the right idea here, which is, you know, try to bounce outside or get uh, attack the edges of this defense where they are actually weak. This is actually going to be a great uh, the off tackle runs are going to be great physique. Um, and so so will jet sweeps, because uh, although the Giants uh, have athletes at the linebacker position who are able to flow freely, if I was going to say they are weak anywhere or inexperienced anywhere, it would be, um, I guess, at linebacker. Um, and and I maybe, maybe inexperienced isn't the right term because Ogletree is definitely serviceable, but Ogletree is definitely more of a, he's a coverage linebacker, should I say, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, let's, let's look at this play, you know, without further ado. You'll see that the center's job here, he's trying to reach block. And a reach block is just when you skip the man that's in front of you and try to get to the next level, either the linebacker or a tackle or anyone, whoever you're trying to reach uh, is a reach block. Okay, but this guard here is trying to reach block uh, Snacks. Snacks going to run right away from it and flow over and meet Fournette in the hole. So let's watch him do that. You see, he's attempting to reach 
snacks, and he, he can't get there uh, because he's already penetrating and pushing this pocket uh, backwards. And as he does that, he's he's gonna he's gonna cause a collision here. Now look how much of a log jam he causes all four of these blockers to be on one man. They're not that's not the design there. That's snacks. Okay. Now once he does that, he he easily meets Fournette in the hole and disrupts this entire run game. So this is what we have to contend with with Joe Looney and Connor Williams at that in the middle. Okay, here's another uh, play. This is this is a, a outside zone read. Uh, option play, uh, RPO, whatever you want to call it, run pass option, um, which I think we will start running or we will be running a lot more of um, in the weeks to come. Uh, and the reason being, I think Dak showed some level of comfort when we spread out um, when we spread out the Panthers, and I think we were attacking even better in the second half when we actually spread them out. Um, and also the Giants actually play better when you try to overpower them so this is not a team we want to overpower this is a team we want to spread out uh and wear thin and this is what the jags game plan is that's actually the beauty of watching the jags and how they play against the giants because we have similar styles um quarterbacks that still are developing uh both blake Bortles and dak are you know developing we still don't kind of know what blake is we don't know what dak is going to be yet um but we know that right now they're not the types of quarterbacks that are just going to pick you apart when you have these eight-man fronts that you're seeing. Uh, and they lean on their young uh, horse of a running back in Leonard Fournette, just as we lean on Zeke. So uh, this is actually a great apples-to-apples -apples comparison because I believe the Giants will play us a lot like um, the they played the Jags. And I believe that our success lies in uh, some of the things that the Jags were able to do as well. Although the Jags didn't score, uh, excuse me, um, I do believe that uh, we're going to be able to uh, sustain ourselves and, and, and have some level of success uh, against this this Giants defense. Even though they only gave up 13 points um, to the Jags offense, um, that they, they lost on an interception uh, for, that went to the house. Uh, they didn't lose because, the Giants that is, they didn't lose because they gave up po too many points. Now, the defense actually played very well. But let's look at it here. All right, they get snacks, you know, pinned inside, which is what the scheme of that was. They, they're trying to isolate 93 here. Um, they got they get a body on the mic, who is Ogletree. Uh, and, you know, then his job, uh, Fortnite's job, is to just run off tackle, which he does, and uh, let the Will linebacker play cleanup, which he does. Um, we did something very similar here against the Panthers. You see here? It's almost the same. Well, it is the same exact play. It's just that based on the sets that they that the Panthers took, uh, our blocking scheme was slightly different based on the personnel. But same play, and this is where we need to attack them on the edges. Another thing I like uh, as far as attacking the edges, one thing that it does that I do like uh, when I say you're running out here in these areas here, off tackle, is the fact that it forces the corners to come up. If, if that running back is going to bounce outside, I mean, the corner has the contained responsibility. Their, their, their gap is out here in no man's land, right? So when you bounce out there and you run out there and that running back bounces out, it forces corners to come up and tackle. And I like that because we have physical a physical running uh, style. All of our running backs are pretty physical. And beating up some of those corners like Apple and Jenkins will be good for us. Uh, you see what was ha was happening here. They were able to attack Jenkins a few times, but even though Jenkins got an interception, he actually played pretty well. But if you're going to attack him, you definitely want to rough these guys up. And uh, I, I like just that, that powerhouse football here that, that the Jags were attempting. And we play, and when I say similar, I'm going to show you a clip. We play very similar. Even though the personnel is different, so the formation is slightly different, they have an extra tight end. We're going to use a fullback in our formation. But we play pretty similar. But you see how they isolate Jenkins here? If Fournette breaks this tackle, which he generally can do, um, he this is a big run. There's no one else to stop him here. Jenkins does a good job of coming up and actually making that tackle while he waits for help. But if you see here, Zeke's doing the same thing against their rookie here. We isolated this kid. Now, Zeke didn't beat him either. But, you know, this is something when Zeke's in midseason form, you know, uh, I'd say 
five, six times out of ten, he's going to beat this guy. Maybe even eight times out of ten, he's going to beat this guy, whether he's jumping over him or running around him. So I like that we isolate those corners and just look at Snacks Harris and what, he, what he's able to do to disrupt teams. Uh, see, the edge is set here, so Fournette's going to read that, and he knows he has to cut this inside now and, and drive towards Ogletree or Armstrong. I think Ogletree's going to get picked up by this tight end. Uh, or this guard. I don't know if it's a tight end or a guard that's pulling. I didn't look that far back. Uh, but you see here, Snacks is going to fall right in that hole. And if there's anybody on our team who can deal with Snacks, I would say it's Zach Martin inside. Uh, so I, 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 would, I would think that the Cowboys see this as well. So instead of us running to uh, the our left, I think we'll be running right a lot more forcing snacks into uh, Zach Martin rather than uh, into Connor Williams. Because I think Connor Williams will struggle with snacks because he struggles with power. And that's what snacks is. He's all power. So um, I think if there's if there's anyone on our team that can deal with him, it'd be Zach Martin. And I think we will be running a lot more runs uh, to the right. But watch how he creates this, you know, pile up here. He, he, he causing an isolation for the defensive end here. He's going to get inside and cause some pressure and cause Bros to step up. But when he does that, because Snacks is able to take out all three of these blockers over here, you see 72 free up as a result of that. And now he's going to come and clean this up for, for the sack. But that's what Snacks is able to do. That's that's a Snacks Harris sack, even though he gets nowhere near the quarterback. You know, the reason these defensive ends are free to run is because of Harris. Now, this is the effect of Harris. When Harris isn't out there, Look at how the Jags run. Look at where they run. Right up the middle. <laughs> right up the middle. And look at how much success they have doing it. You know, he's, he's even able to stop his feet and get somewhere, right? Can't do that when Harris is there. Can't. Here's, a, here's another inside. This is an inside zone read, but here's another run up the middle. Keep in mind, Harris is not on the field right now. And this is how much of a difference maker he actually is. Look at this. You can't. And now I think we'll do something similar. We'll run during the series when he's taking his breathers. And that's fine, we'll run up the middle anyway. And in these situations, I think that this is where we have big play opportunities uh, on the ground when Snacks is in, because look at the level of push that the Jags are able to get. And I don't think their offensive line, even without Fredericks, I don't think their offensive line is as good as ours. Um, and look at the level of push that they get when Harris isn't in the game. So I think we have to just t pick our spots and pick our times to actually run up the gut. But it can be done. It just has to be done when Harris isn't on the field, in my opinion. I just, I really believe that. Now, I don't disrespect the Giants by saying that they're just Snack Harris and, you know, Snack Harris only. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I, won't, I won't even disrespect their linebackers. But he is a very big part of why their linebackers are able to run free why their safety Collins is able to come down and have success without getting bodies on them because he just causes so much havoc. Uh, so Snacks is obviously back in. So you guys want to guess where the Jags are running if they're running on this play? Uh, if you picked outside, uh, you're probably right. Let's check it out. All right. Now watch what Snacks does in the middle as well. But he's back on the field. That Snacks Harris there. And just watch the type of mess that he creates and the lanes, the the gap, the the lanes that he creates for his linebackers or the gaps that he opens up uh, for his linebackers to just run through. These linemen cannot reach block on these linebackers because of Snacks Harris. Okay, but doesn't matter because we're not running at them anyway. Boom. See that? All right. Snacks is if we were running in there, there's nothing there. Uh, Snacks is in there. The defensive end was freed up because of that. Uh, well, it might have been the blocking scheme that freed him up as well. But uh, we'll have a lot of success, I think, you know, testing those corners outside in the running game. That's just my opinion. I'm not a coach, nor do I uh, play in the league. When a commentator says, uh, let's play physical, hard-nosed football, uh, that's like a euphemism for let's go out and hurt some people. <laughs> Uh, really, it is. They just can't say that. But uh, because, you know, uh, CTE and all the things that happen when people, you know, retire and they get hurt. No one wants to see anybody hurt. But, uh, you know, uh, I actually like when people get cracked in the mouth. I just I don't know why. But anyway, um, that's why I like to see our, our I would like to see our running game uh, exploit those edges and get some bodies on those corners 
uh, and Zeke let Zeke rough him up a little bit because if if, if Dak's going to be successful, I think it'd be best if uh, you know we, we're we're making those corners work uh, extra hard, you know, so that they're not as good or as fresh when it comes to coverage. Uh, let's look at what the Jags did here. You see how they were isolating already? They've been doing it uh, right here. I want I, I want Fournette instead of trying to run away from Apple. Uh, I, w I would like to see Zeke, you know, put a body on him, uh, honestly, like body him up. The sort of like uh, Brandon Jacobs used to. He used to come around the corner. I remember he hit uh, Terrence Newman. I'm sorry, Terrence Newman. He flipped Terrence Newman uh, onto his back, and uh, that was just a good a good hard-nosed run. I like the way they used to use Brandon Jacobs. He was a battering ram that just roughed up defenses uh, so that you can pass on them. On this play here, Yeldon, because of a injury to Fournette, he's able. To, he's in. Uh, that's why he's in. But he's able. This is the only play I found that he he was able to get success up the middle. And as you see this uh, play unfold, Snacks Harris is actually in. Um, but uh, I think he's assuming that, and the, the defense is assuming that he's he's running this inside zone to the left when he cuts it back and gets skinny and comes back right, as you can see here, and. Uh, when I say he gets skinny, I mean there is no hole there, no no real one. He just had to like kind of squeeze in there because Collins was coming from the outside. Great run though. I know this is not the Snacks Harris show, but this is how much he means to this defense. Just look at what he does in the middle of the field here. Here he is again. Here he is again. Now watch this mess that he creates here. He doesn't make the tackle, but look at this. There is nothing. There's nothing for you there. So if we're going to have success, it's going to be outside. And just because he's big, he's a lot like Antoine Woods. He's big, but he's not slow. He's able to chase this play down uh, and make a play here. So he's not just a guy that's going to stay in his general area. This is why he's so dangerous. He floats with this play. It's a great run, though. A good, good successful run. But, you know, he, he gets there. Now, obviously, you guys watched the video I did on the Panthers breakdown where we watched Dak um, not really play so well. Uh, but like I said at the in that video, and I meant it, we can win with Dak. We just have to put him in, com in his comfort zone and in position to do what he does best, which is move, uh, use his feet to throw, uh, and make quick and easy reads. Here's an example of something we can do with Tavon Austin uh, in these big formations that we come out in. Uh, you know, these these three tight end, two tight end formations, where we're able to again still attack the edges. But use Zeke, and this is why it's important to have Zeke uh, utilize early and often. And we can't have a lot of holding calls, false starts, you know, you know, penalties. We can't have the penalties because if we're able to use Zeke early on, everything opens up for both him and Tavon. And this is why. See that play act, this play action bootleg here. They're gonna sneak Cole out across the line, which is gonna make his man here release he's gonna to have to release him because he's not gonna follow him across the, the line someone else is supposed to pick him up but there's no one there so watch this play and, and this is this these are plays that we run and this is something that we can definitely do with some level of success against these eight man fronts see how they get the the motion going this way the the entire defense boom then sneak austin out to the to the flat these are plays that we can definitely run i'd say we should stay away from the edges uh meaning the corners outside I, I think that was the mistake from the Jaguars perspective they started trying to attack this Giants defense from the outside and that was a mistake uh, reason being Eli Apple and, and Janoris Jenkins were playing lights out football here's Eli Apple at the bottom of the screen um, I think he's sticking Westbrook on this play or no that's Moncrief uh, but there's nothing there for him I mean he's just there's just nothing there uh, he, he played great great coverage on that play and there's just nothing there for him. Now, using uh, Dak's legs is ideal. Uh, and that's something we didn't do a lot of last week. Maybe Dak's a little dinged up this week as well. I know he's on an injury report for his ankle. So maybe we don't do this. But you'll see the level of effect that al alignment has. Because you see how Yeldon is lined up to uh, uh, Broyles' left. So that that means he's either running the inside zone. As this is he's actually lined up in inside zone. If he was uh, basically either way though, it's coming to the left side of the defense. So that's going to freeze everything over here. Meaning this defensive end here, Ogletree, Snacks, Harris, all these guys have to respect that. And then the 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 motion of the line is going to move 
everyone else in the right direction. So with that said, what that does is if if they bite and if this this defensive end if he bites, uh, Broyles is supposed to read that and then you know break free. And this is something that Dak can do very well. Let's look at it. See here, he's gone. He's done. This guy bit so hard. I don't know his name, but he bit hard as hell. But he bit so hard that Broyles has no nothing nothing to do but look at grass for a while. You know, look at that. Now, this is something that Dak is capable of. Uh, he's a great quarterback with his feet. Uh, and if we use Dak's feet uh, to our advantage, we we have a chance here. Like here, pay attention to Broyles' feet. And in alignment, this is RPO as well. Fakes to the left, I mean, and then runs back right, screen pass. These are things that we can take advantage of, and we showed a little bit in the Panthers game. Don't fall for the fool's goal. And what I mean by that is... Don't throw the ball out here, outside the lines. The, 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 the Giants will give you this cover three look or cover one single high safety look. Uh, they're running cover three uh, with Collins down in the box. But they, they, they use this safety. Uh, I think that's C Riley. They use him high. Now, there are always going to be lanes out here, but I wouldn't try to beat, any, beat these guys deep. Uh, now, the Jags are going to be successful on this particular play because Blake Broyles actually made a perfect throw on this play, which we're not going to be able to do day in, day out. Neither was he. He's not able to do that over and over again or consistently. So I wouldn't even attempt it because I call it fool's gold. Janoris Jenkins just barely gets beat on this play. Uh, after that, when when Blake Broyles tries this again, you'll see what happens. Uh, Janoris is all over him. And Eli Apple was playing lights out football right now like a number one shutdown corner should. Uh, and that's that's what he looks like. Here you go. Now, you know, perfect perfect uh, stride. He, he caught him in stride. Janoris couldn't really do much other than chase and tackle. Uh, but, again, I don't think this is the best way to attack the Giants' uh, defense. What I think we should be doing is in-breaking routes, slant patterns, a lot of misdirections, using Dak's feet. Similar to the way the Jags are going to adjust and use Blake Burroughs' feet to, you know, throw the Giants off guard. Uh, similar to the way we played the Panthers, actually. So the, these two games are identical. So hopefully we're able to uh, look a little bit better this week than we did the last. Now, in this single, in these single high looks, there are ample opportunities uh, because that safety is the only deep man. Okay, they're playing man down here. Um, underneath usually or they're playing a cover three where they're you know the linebackers and the safety will be pretty much blanket everything here and those corners and that safety uh, the free safety will play deep right thirds so Eli Apple this is this is him uh, this would have been Jenkins if he was playing cover three and this is his zone here uh, Riley's zone if he's playing cover three but in this case they're playing cover one meaning there's a single high safety everyone else is man underneath right now Dak, if Dak sees this look, if he's given this look, there are opportunities depending on where the safety, what the safety is keying in on. And Dak likes to move his feet, so maybe we can use that. Because if he moves his feet towards a particular target, we can kind of draw this safety towards that area and, and hit things backside, things like that, like backside screens to the tight end, so on, right? But on this particular play here, there is an opportunity that that Broyles had but missed, and he, I don't. I mean, he probably saw it by now in the film room. But check it out. Um, he's going to go for I believe it's Coles or is that Westbrook uh, across the middle here? He's running this route here. Jenkins is on him, and Riley keys in right there. Now Riley had already keyed in, so he wouldn't. Uh, uh, Cole wouldn't be as open as he is right now had the ball not already been thrown, obviously. But Riley chasing this play here to the pylon i don't think he makes that play um he did make this one though he made a hell of a play on this play and he, he made a clean hit as well but uh not to say that you know Broyles did anything wrong here it's just saying you know that's he decided to to go for the uh in breaking route rather than the deep ball but when i say stay away from those outs the, the outside i really i really mean that you you want to use motion and you want to stay away from these corners out here because they're both playing pretty well uh, look at Eli Apple here at the bottom of the screen. He's he's taken away all of the ground for Minecraft. There's nothing for Minecraft to do. There's nowhere for him to go. Um, that's how you want your corners 
playing coverage. You know, that Blake Brewers knew where he wanted to go with the ball. I think their game plan based on last year's film was to attack Eli Apple, and they were wrong. Another example, Janoris Jenkins is a seasoned vet. So, you know, attacking these these outside uh, uh, corners is a no-no. The Giants are trying to force um, the Jags into these types of throws, though. So you have you have to ignore that. Just ignore it. You know, ignore those 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 opportunities unless you really see something that you just can't ignore. But for the most part, you want to be working in here. You want to be working in the middle of the field, using the running game to pull these linebackers and safety and safety out of position and make them come down so that we create soft spots uh, in the middle of the field if they're in zone. If they're in man, then obviously it's just a foot race. Uh, look here when Blake Broyles tries Janoris Jenkins for the second time. Now he tried this throw again. He, he tried it earlier. This time he took an outside release. Jenkins played it perfectly. He takes away all of the real estate and then intercepts that ball. That was perfect defense, perfect coverage. And that's why I say let's just not bother attacking those guys outside. Not like Dak and those guys are listening to me. But, uh, you know, I just don't think that we'll have success out there. That's just my opinion. And this is why footwork and Dak's footwork is going to be important for him. Um, his 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 weakness can be a strength if he's mindful of his own weakness. Maybe Dak needs to scout himself because his his weakness can be a strength. He he runs at his targets, but if he starts running at the the uh, uh, opposite target or a target that he's not a wide receiver that he's not targeting per se, he gets a free read, an, an extra look or an extra progression out of it. Let me show you what I mean by that. Look at how Broyles, Broyles is basically going to sprint out to the right a little bit. And when he does that, his spy is going to follow him out of the middle of the field. He's going to follow him. When he does that, this receiver here is going to be able to sneak into that soft spot. But Broyles hits, he throws underneath, which is fine. You're going to throw whoever he sees first. But he throws underneath on this particular play only because I know he doesn't see this on the back end. But just watching this film, I hope the Cowboys are watching it because there's opportunities against the Giants in those soft areas like this here. So off and it's working off of the play action. You see that. Let's freeze it. But you see how Broyles ran this way. And once he did, his spy follows. That left this opening here, right, right dab in the middle of the field. We can take advantage of plays and looks like that all day long if we give similar looks or we, we get similar looks. And I think we will because, again, the Giants are going to play us a lot like they played the Jacks because we're similar teams. Let's look at another play similar to that one. It's going to be another RPO play action. Uh, and it just shows this is a play that we use all the time. This is Witten's old favorite play. Uh, that RPO just holds this guy here, and it opens up uh, the seam for, for Blake Broyles and R. Dak to get a free read. We'll use this play. I'm quite sure you'll see it once or twice in this game as well i think janoris jenkins was saying fool me once so to speak because he didn't fall for anything else the rest of the day um he, he played very solid and eli apple played even better believe it or not without an interception at that and that's saying something he just didn't give up anything on that side but you're going to watch here uh, janoris is going to pick up the tight end and and uh blake Broyles is going to try to make a throw to the pylon over the over his head uh and he almost gets another pick here uh, see here, he picks up S Safarian Jenkins, comes up underneath him. Blake tries it, and he gets two hands on that ball. Still almost gives up a touchdown, too, but, you know, he played great on that play. Like, instead of focusing on the things that Dak can't do, uh, which I don't want to do to him, uh, let's focus on the things that he can do in what I call the gold zone. So then 15 square mi square yard radius uh, outside the, like, right outside the tackles, and, and you know, in between the hashes. Nothing outside. He can make these throws, though. And these are throws that that we can we can run into our offense, and I think we already have them, but they're all predicated around this guy. The run has to be working because in order for these linebackers to move in a way where he, he has the windows he needs, Dak is going to rely a lot on Zeke. And I think this is why uh, defenses try to key in on Zeke so bad because once, he's, once we stop using Zeke effectively, um, it all falls apart. But look here. These are plays that Dak definitely can run here. Uh, Blake Broyles is 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 basically going to play action here to Yeldon. And then he's going to look for this soft spot right up here where my cursor is. Boom. These are plays that Dak doesn't have a problem throwing because they'll obviously be wide open. Going to pass. Let's use those legs. See? Uh, boot legs. Things like this. This is what we want to see. 
uh, from Zeke and Dak. These are plays that we can run. Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Nothing is impossible! No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can!